to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you're new, I'm ASB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life states. So today's topic is going to be Reynolds Syndrome. For those of you who may not have heard of it, hopefully we can just learn from each other today and educate each other on this. And as a question, just before I begin this, to any one of you who has this syndrome, please let us know what life is like for you as well as basically what do you do to try and prevent this happening on a daily basis of the symptoms that arises on this this would be much appreciated no for. Reynolds syndrome, also known as Reynolds syndrome, however, is a medical condition which spasms out the arteries or the spasm of the arteries that then tends to cause episodes in the arteries of that will reduce the blood flow and circulation in the blood to return back to normal. Typically, the fingers and less commonly, the toes are usually involved. Really, the nose, ears and lips are infected. The episodes result in the affected part returning white and then turn blue. Often there is numbness and or pain depending on the person, however. As blood flow returns, the area turns red and it burns. The episodes typically last minutes but then may likely to last up to several hours. Raynoid's disease, smaller arteries obviously that supply the blood to the skin will narrow, limiting blood circulation to the affected areas which is known as vasospasms. Women are more likely than men to have Raynaud's disease, also known as, as I said, it appears to be more common in people who live in the colder climates. Episodes are often triggered by cold or emotional stress. There are two main types of the Raynaud's disease. You've got the primary rain noise when the causes is unknown and the secondary rain noise which occurs is another end result of another condition. Secondary rain noise can occur due to a connective tissue disorder such as scler sclerodoma or lupus, injuries to the hands, prolonged vibration, smoking, thyroid problems and certain medications that you may take such as birth control pills. Diagnosis is typically based on the everyday symptoms, which this is coming up next. Following. Cold fingers or toes, colour changes in your skin in response to the cold or stress, numb prickly feeling or stinging pain upon warming or st stress relief. During an attack of Raynaud's, affected areas of your skin usually first turn white. Then they often turn blue and feel cold and numb as you warm and circulation will likely to improve. The affected areas may turn red, throb, tingle or swell. Although rainoids most commonly affects your fingers and toes, it can also affect other areas of the body as mentioned, such as your nose, lips, ears and nipples. After warming, it can take 15 minutes for normal blood flow to return to the actual area where the blood circulation has stopped or just has caused this tingling sensation. The condition can cause pain within the affected extremities, discoloration, which is your paleness, and sensations of cold and or numbness. This can often be distressing to those who are diagnosed, undiagnosed, and sometimes it can be obstructive. If someone with rain noise is placed into a colder climate, it could be potentially dangerous. When exposed to cold temperatures, the blood supply to the fingers or toes, and in some cases the nose or ear lobes, is markedly re reduced. The skin turns pale or white, called paler, and becomes cold and numb. These events are episodic, and when the episode subsides or the area is warmed up, the blood will flow will return, and the skin colour first turns red, rubber, and then back to normal, often accompanied by swelling, tingling, and or painful pins and needles like sensation. All three colour changes are observed in the classic Rhinoids. However, not all patients see all of the aforementioned colour changes in all episodes, especially in milder cases of the condition. Symptoms are thought to be due to reactive hypodermis or hypomyas of the areas deprived from that blood flow. In pregnancy, however, this sign will normally show up or disappear owing to the increased surface blood flow. 
Brain ulcers also incurred in breastfeeding mothers causing nipples to turn white and become extremely painful. The causes of Raynaud's disease. Doctors don't completely fully understand the Raynaud's attacks, but blood vessels in the hands and feet appear to overact to cold temperatures or stress. Right, the primary causes, as I mentioned, of the Raynaud's disease or primary Raynaud's is diagnosis if the symptoms are idiopathic, that is, if they are cured by themselves and not in association with other diseases. Some may refer to primary Raynaud's disease as being allergic to the coldness. It often develops in young women in their teens and early adulthood. Primary Raynaud's is thought to be at least partly hereditary, although specific genes have not yet been identified. Smoking increases the frequency and intensity of the attacks, and there's a hormonal component. Caffeine, estrogen, and non-selective beta blockers are often listed as aggravating factors, but evidence that they should be avoided is not solid. People with the condition are more likely to have migraines and angina. The secondary causes, however, Raynaud's phenomenal or secondary Raynaud's occurs secondary to a wide variety of other conditions and they may have a list of number associations due to these body systems like such as your connective tissue disorders, sleidoma, systematic systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, dermatomitosis, polymyotosis, you could have it and uh, the association of that's connective tissue diseases such as cold agulatin disease, allergic dermal disease, eating disorders such as your anorexia nervosa. There could be some form of obstructive diseases such as Burgers disease, arteriosis by tachyosis, subclavian aneurysms, thoracic outlet syndrome. Drugs could come into effect of this factor, which are your beta blockers, cytotoxic drugs, particularly chemotherapeutics, and mostly, especially gliomycin, cyclosporin, bromocryptine, ergotamine, anthrax vaccines, whose primary ingredient is the anthrax protective antigen, or the triple A's as I usually call it, your stimulant medications, such as those to treat ADHD patients, amphetamine and methyl pinodite. Occupation. Jobs involving vibration, particularly drilling and prolonged use of a string trimmer, which is known as a weed hacker, suffer from vibration, white finger exposure to vinyl chloride, mercury exposure to the cold, working as a, you know, food, wood, frozen wood processes. Others could be your physical trauma, such as that sustained in auto accidents or other traumatic events, Lyme disease, hypothyroidism, malignancy, chronic fatigue syndrome, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, carpal tunnel syndrome, magnesium deficiency, multiple cirrhosis, Erythromyalgia, which is clinically presenting in itself as the opposite of Raynaud's, however, with hot and warm extremities, often coexist in patients with Raynaud's. Raynaud's can herald these diseases by periods of more than 20 years in some cases, making it effective the their first presenting symptoms. This may be the case in the CRES or T syndrome of which Raynaud's is a part of. Patients with secondary Raynaud's can also have symptoms related to their underlying diseases. Raynaud's phenomenon is the initial symptom that presents for about 70% of patients with scleroderma, a skin and joint disease. Raynaud's, when Raynaud's phenomenon is limited to one hand or one foot, it's referred to as an unilateral Raynaud's. This is a common form and it's also always secondary to local or regional vascular diseases. It commonly progresses within several years to affect other limbs as the vascular diseases progresses. The risk factors to look out for, especially for primary raynoids, is your sex. Ma more women than males or men are often affected in this. Your age, ethos, can develop. anyone can develop with this condition. 
Primary rainouts often begin at the ages of 15 and 30. Climate. This disorder is also more common in people who live in colder climates. Family history. A first degree relative, a parent, sibling or child having the disease appears to increase your risk of primary rainouts. On the other hand, for the risk factors for your secondary rainouts may include the following. Associated diseases, as I mentioned, include conditions such as sleidoma and lupus. Certain occupations, those jobs that occur when you're using repetitive trauma of operating tools that may vibrate, for example. Exposure to certain chemical substances or just substances in general. This may include smoking. Taking form of medications that affect the blood vessels and expo being exposed to certain chemicals such as vinyl chloride. The mechanism. Its pathophysiology includes hyperactivation of the systematic nervous system causing extreme vasoconstriction of the peripheral blood vessels leading to the tissue hypoxia. The diagnosis. Heat signatures of the rain of a rainon's hand top and a healthy hand on the bottom basically will be shown as an illustration. The red indicates the warmer areas, whilst the green indicates the cooler areas of the hand that will be shown. Consensuous diagnostic criteria. It's important to distinguish rainoids disease, primary rainoids from phenom phenoms, which is the secondary rainoids. Looking for signs of arthritis or vasculitis, vasculitis, as well as a number of laboratory results or tests that may separate the two of them. If suspected to be secondary to systemic sclerosis, however, one tool which may help aid in the prediction of systemic sclerosis is thermography, as mentioned before. A careful medical history will often reveal whether the patient or condition is primary or secondary. Once this has been clearly established, an examination is largely to identify or exclude possibly causes. Digital art artery pressure. Pressures are measured in the arteries of the fingers before and after the hands has been cooled. A decrease of at least 15 milligrams per Hg is diagnostic positive. The Doppler ultrasound, however, is the one that will be used to access the blood flow in the system. Full blood count. This may reveal a normocytic anemia, suggesting the anemia of chronic disease or renal failure. Blood tests for urea and electrolytes. This may reveal renal impairment. Thyroid function test. This may reveal hypothyroidism. And anti also antibody screen test for rheumatoid factor, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and C-reactive protein, which may reveal specific creative causative in illnesses or a generalized inflammatory process. Nail for vasculature. This can be examined under the microscope to aid in the diagnosis of the Raynoids phenomenon. Multiple sets of diagnostic criteria have been proposed. Recently, international consensus criteria were developed for the diagnosis of primary Raynoids phenomenon by a panel of multiple experts in the fields of rheumatology and dermatology. Prevention. To help prevent these attacks of Raynoids, balloon up outdoors. When it's cold, do up a hat, scarf, socks and boots and two layers of mittens or gloves before you go outside. Wear a coat with snug cuffs to go around your mittens or gloves to prevent cold air from reaching into your hands. Use chemical hand warmers. Wear earmuffs and a face mask if the tip of the nose and ear loops are sensitive to cold. Warm your car if you've got a car. Run your car heater for a few minutes before driving in the cold weather. Take precautions indoors. Wear socks when taking food out of the refrigerator or fridge, freezer. Wear gloves, mittens or oven mitts. Some people find it helpful to wear mittens and socks to bed during winter season. Because air conditioning can trigger attacks, set your air conditioner to a warmer temperature. Use insulated drinking glass. Some cause and as primary rainouts, avoiding triggers such as cold, emotional stresses, 
and environmental stresses, vibrations and repetitive motions, avoid smoking, include passive smoking and sympathetic drugs if necessary. Medications can be helpful for moderate or severe RP. Vasodilators chemical your calcium channel blockers such as dihydropyridines, nifedenfin and amylopine preferably slow release preparations are often first line treatment. They may have some common side effects such as headaches, flushing and ankle edema, but these are not typically of sufficient severity to require a sensation of treatment. The limited evidence, however, available shows that the calcium channel blockers are only slightly effective in reducing how often the attacks may happen. People whose RP is secondary to urethromalgia often cannot use vasodilators, however, for therapy as they trigger flares, causing the extremities to becoming burning red due to there being too much blood in the system. People with severe RP are prone to oscillation or large artery thrombotic events may be prescribed aspirin. Some pathologic agents such as the alpha adrenergic blocker prazosin may provide temporary relief. Losartan can and topical nitrates may reduce the severity and frequency of attacks and the phosphorus inhibitors sildenafil and Tendilafil may reduce the severity. Angiotensin receptor blockers or ACE inhibitors may aid blood flow to the fingers and therefore there is some evidence that these angiotensin receptor blockers often losartan reduce frequency and severity of attacks and possibly better than nifedipine. The prostaglin Iloprost is used to manage critical ischemia and probably hypertension and RP and the endothelin receptor antagonist bosentin is used to manage severe pulmonary hypertension and prevent finger ulcers in sclerodoma. Statins have a protective effect on blood vessels and SSRIs such as fluoroxetine may have RP symptoms but the data is weak to suggest this. PDF5 inhibitors are used to off-label treat tre ischemia and ulcers and fingers and toes for people with secondary Raynaud's phenomenon. As of 2016, they are all made generally in Raynaud. For some cases of severe Raynaud's procedures that m might be in treatment options include nerve surgery, sympathetic, sympathetic nerves in your hands and feet control the opening and narrowing of the blood vessels in your skin. Cutting these nerves interrupts their exaggerated responses. Through small incisions in the affected hands or feet, a doctor strips these tiny nerves around the blood vessels. The surgery sympathetic money is successful, might reduce the frequency and duration of these attacks that you get. Chemical injection. Doctors can inject chemicals such as local anesthetics or on number type A, which is known as your Botox, to block sympathetic nerves in affected hands or feet. You might need to have the procedure prepared if symptoms may return or persist. In severe cases, an endoscopic thoracic sympathetic sympathetic my procedure can be performed. Here, the nerves that signal the blood vessels of the fingertips to construct a surgically cut. There are a variety of steps that can help you reduce Raynaud's attacks and you, help you make feel better. Avoid smoke. As I said, smoking or inhaling secondhand smoke can cause skin temperature to drop by constricting the blood vessels, which can lead, lead to these attacks. Exercise can increase circulation among other health benefits. If you have secondary rainers, talk to your doctor before exercising outdoors in the cold. Control stress. Learning to recognize and avoid stressful situations might help control the number of attacks. Or with rapidly changing temperatures. Try not to move from a hot environment to the unconditioned rooms. If possible, avoid frozen food sections of grocery stores. What to do during an attack with your Raynaud's disease, uh, warm your hands or feet onto the infected areas to gently warm your fingers and toes, get indoors or to a warmer area, wiggle your fingers and toes, place your hands around the armpits, make wide circular circles like a windmill with your arms, run warm but not hot water over your fingers and toes, 
Massage your hands and feet. If triggers, take, triggers an attack, get out of the stressful situation and relax. Practice a stress reduction technique that works for you and warm your hands or feet in water to release in the attack. Lifestyle changes and supplements that increase encourages your better circulation might help you manage rain noise. However, the evidence of effectiveness is still unclear and more study has to be needed here. If you're interested, talk to your doctors about the following. Fish oil. Taking fish oil supplements could help improve your tolerance to cold. Ginkgo supplements could help decrease the number of rain noise attacks. Acupuncture. This practice appears to improve blood flow, so it may be helpful in relieving rain noise attacks. Biofeedback. Using your mind to control your body temperature might help decrease the severity and frequency of these attacks. Biofeedback includes guided imagery to increase the temperature of your hands and feet, deep breathing, and other relaxation exercises. Your doctor may be able to suggest a therapist who can help you to to learn biofeedback techniques, there are books and DVDs on the subjects where you can get them from. Again, talk to your doctor before taking any of these supplements because your doctor may be able to warn you if there are any other possible drug interactions or side effects of these alternative treatments at hand. So this quickly ends my video of rain noise disease. Hope you liked it. Smash the like. Comment below. Feel free to share these videos around. Feel free to follow me on my social medias. Feel free to also subscribe if you haven't done so if you want to join me on the bang bang game feel free to do so if you're just so doing this don't forget to do it on the notification bell to not miss any future updates feel free to sh share these videos around and on for the do guys thanks for support thanks for watching do you love love you're doing i'll see you again soon